Hello and welcome to this video which is a presentation of my latest art project that I have been working on for about a year and a half and I call it Blinkensort with sound or the sound of LED sorting because what it does it displays sorting algorithms on one of these new fancy addressable NeoPixel LED strips that you can buy. And this particular LED strip has 480 RGB pixels on 5 meters, which makes it 96 LEDs per meter. And each of these pixels can be individually controlled via SBI using a Raspberry Pi 3 here at the end. And on this Raspberry Pi, the sorting algorithms are run and the sound is generated in real time. The strip is basically a big display or screen on which you can see the array and what the algorithm is currently doing. I also added an LED dot matrix display such that you can see which algorithm is currently run and also how many comparisons the algorithm needed. On my blog panthema.net you can find an article on the making of this art project and also which parts you would need and how to solder them together if you would want to build your own. There are two projects, one with an ESP8266 which has no sound and this version of the project which has a Raspberry Pi with sound. Now the sorting algorithms actually operate internally on an array containing numbers from 0 to 479 and the numbers are then mapped to the colors of the rainbow. So in the beginning the colors are randomly shuffled and then the sorting algorithm has the task to, well, sort the numbers such, such that in the end you see the nicely colored rainbow again. This project can also be seen as an extension to my incredibly popular Sound of Sorting video on YouTube. And much of the source code on the Raspberry Pi is actually from the Sound of Sorting, including the sound generation. Except of course that the LED strip sort of brings the sorting algorithm into the real world as flashing dancing lights with sound that interact with each other in real time. The sounds you hear are based on frequencies calculated from the items the algorithm is currently comparing or moving around. Since the algorithms are very fast, you hear many 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 frequencies superimposed onto each other at the same time. I also find this a very artful use of these popular LED strips because these animations are infinitely changing and intriguingly complex and are really fun to watch and hear. Each algorithm does something completely different which makes this an interesting art installation with deep connections to informatics and I'm going to explain each of them in short while they are running. I'm going to reset the Raspberry Pi now such that we can start from the beginning. It's going to take a while to boot. Come on. The first algorithm is merge sort, and what merge sort does is make small pre-sorted packages which you can see as small rainbows and hear as these whoop whoop whoops. These small pre-sorted rainbows are then merged together into larger rainbows or larger longer whoops, which again are merged into larger ones until in the end the entire strip is correctly sorted. Now merge sort is fun to hear because it has these ascending whoop whoop sequences. We will hear these again and again in other algorithms. Merge sort runs in worst case O of n log n time. Nearly done. That was the final merge. And that is just a check for sortedness at the end. Next is insertion sort. The left part of the LED strip is kept sorted as you can see here. And what the algorithm does is it takes the next item from the right, which isn't sorted, and moves it into the correct position by swapping it to the left as far as needed. And these are these white flashes which indicate the movement of the items to the left. And since the items are initially uniformly randomly ordered on the right, on average the white flash goes halfway into the sorted part. In my opinion, insertion sort sort of sounds like lasers in a space war or something like that. 
pew 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 which are the items moving to the left So the next algorithm is quicksort. What quicksort does is pick a random color and then partition the strip according to this color. Smaller colors go to the left and larger goes to the right. So here it picked some blue color, which, which is why the right part is green and blue. It does this recursively until it is completely sorted. And that was nearly it. That was quick. Quicksort runs in expected O of n log n time. The sound of Quicksort contains a lot of random noise as it scans areas, but the randomness actually decreases as it goes further down into the recursive levels where items become much more similar than in the top levels. There are actually multiple versions of Quicksort. The last one we just saw used two pointers from the left and the right going into the center. This one uses two pointers which both go from the left to the right. Both algorithms are asymptotically the same, but in practice the left and right variant is a bit faster. The next algorithm is a special dual pivot quicksort. It actually picks two colors, and if you watch very closely, you may see that each partition operation creates three areas at once. This algorithm is actually a bit faster than the usual quicksort and is becoming very popular in the Java world. So the next algorithm is shell sort, which is an interesting small algorithm. It is a generalization of insertion sort, but it operates by swapping items that are much further apart. These items are still moved from the right to the left, however the comparisons and exchanges are gapped, and these gaps grow smaller in each iteration of the algorithm. The sound of shell sort is also defined by these gaps, because as they grow smaller, more similar items are compared and the algorithm sounds less and less random. And of course, there's these sweeps that you can hear. Next one is heap sort. In heap sort, a binary heap is created inside the array or the LED strip. You can see the binary heap here on the left. On the very left, there is the currently largest remaining item, and in each step, this item is moved from the left part to the right part, which is sorted. The heap of obviously then has to be corrected. The sound of heap sort contains two components. The first is the descending sequence of items placed into the final sorted area on the right, and the other component are the logarithmic corrections in the binary heap. If you hear very carefully, you will hear both at the same time. Heap sort runs in O of n log n time. Next is cycle sort, which is a pretty exotic algorithm. What it does is take the first item on the very left that is not correctly sorted and determines the correct place for the item by scanning the entire array and counting how many items are smaller. The scan is not visible or audible in this presentation because it would be lots and lots of random noise. What you can hear are the cycles of the permutation being corrected one random transposition at a time. Now this algorithm is of course quadratic, but actually does the minimal number of writes to the array because it places each item into its final position every time. Next are two radix sorts. Radix sort looks at the binary representation of the colors, and in this case it looks at the highest two bits of each color's number. It reorders everything into four buckets according to these bits, and then does this recursively for the next two bits and so on. The sound is actually similar to quicksort, because radix sort scans random areas and then corrects them recursively. Next second version of radix sort looks at the lowest two bits first. It is an interesting algorithm because it doesn't actually appear to be sorting the colors at first. Instead it is grouping colors that have similar details. One of the sweeps actually generates shepherd tones, that is this one, which appear to be four infinitely ascending sounds.
Next is STD sort, which is the main sorting algorithm used by C++ programs. As you can see and hear, it is a version of quicksort, which goes into the smaller area first and does not fully sort recursively. Instead, it stops and leaves small base cases left over, which are then fixed by running one large insertion sort sweep. The next one is again a very practical algorithm, STD stable sort, which is the second main sorting algorithm in C++. It is a merge sort variant, which uses less memory than the standard implementation. It also makes multiple small pre-sorted packages at once, and then merges pairs of them together. Those are these small rainbows, and again these small ascending whoop whoop whoops, except that you may notice that the whoop whoops are equal in size, and only when all of the whoops of equal size are done, do they get bigger. Wikisort is another merge sort variant that requires only constant extra memory. This however means that it has to use parts of the strip as buffers and has to resort some items multiple times, which makes it appear to do some very strange things. It is quite fast in practice, but it does have to touch the items more often. In the sound you hear these irregularities compared to the standard merge sort variants. These irregularities are resorting buffers and more shuffling around of the items. Wikisort does not need too many more comparisons than standard merge sort, but it does swap the items around a lot more. Next one is TimSort, which is the default sorting implementation in Python. This is an adaptive sorting algorithm and again a merge sort variant. However, it is adaptive in the sense that it tries to find pre-sorted runs in the input sequence and then use these without extra sorting. However, this input is pretty random, which makes TimSort appear like a pretty efficient merge sort which merges in both directions. And this means that in this case the whoop whoops go up and the whoop whoops go down. And now come some slower quadratic algorithms. This one is selection sort. What selection sort does is keep the left part of the strip sorted and scan the entire right part in search for the next remaining smallest item. So it scans the remaining area to determine just one next smallest item and then it moves the smallest item back into the sorted area. It does this over and over and over again, which makes it run in quadratic time. In the sound, you can obviously hear the scanning over and over and over again. And the further the strip is sorted, the higher the frequencies become and the more annoying selection sort becomes. There, glad this was over. The next is bubble sort, which is another very slow quadratic algorithm. So what bubble sort does is run over the entire array again and again and again and looks at every pair of items. And in case the pair is incorrectly sorted, the right being smaller than the left, it just swaps them. And that is why the smaller items appear to be bubbling to the left and the larger items bubbling to the right. Some people may suggest that one can hear the bubbling in the sound. What I just hear is a smaller and smaller frequency range. Again, this is a quadratic algorithm that should never be used in practice, but it is fun to watch and somewhat fun to hear. This next one is actually a lot more fun to hear. It's called Cocktail Shaker Sort, or just Shaker Sort. And it is a variant of Bubble Sort which sweeps in both directions. In each sweep, it swaps pairs to the left and then to the right. And that's why you can see the items move to the left and move to the right if you watch very closely. However, in each iteration, it does move the largest element to the right and the smallest to the left. So it does make progress in each sweep. 
And of course, in the sound, you can hear the left and right sweeps and left and right sweeps as the algorithm draws closer and closer to the center. It's definitely one of the more fun algorithms to hear. Next is Bozo Sword, which is more a joke algorithm, because it just swaps two random elements and checks if the array is sorted. Then it swaps two again and checks again, and so on. So what you basically hear are just the random swaps, and it is very unlikely that this is going to finish now. So the next four algorithms are not sorting algorithms, but actually hash table implementations. In the beginning, the hash table is empty, and then an ascending sequence of colors is inserted into the table. That is what you currently hear. Each item is placed at a position determined by the hash function. However, what happens when an item's position is already full? This is called a hash collision, and in this variant the algorithm scans forward linearly until it finds an empty slot. And if you hear closely, those are these random sweeps that you can hear which sound very much like quicksort scanning the random areas. There are other collision resolution methods, and the next one is called quadratic probing. Instead of a linear search, the method accelerates its search quadratically for an empty slot. That's why you can see these accelerating white flashes on the strip. Again, in the beginning you hear the ascending sequence, until the collisions add more random sounds into the mix. Next come two amazing hash table variants called cuckoo hashing. In the standard cuckoo hashing, each item has two valid positions where it can go. So to insert an item, both positions are checked, and if either one is empty, the item can be inserted there. However, if both are full, then one of them is removed from the array and the new item is inserted there. The removed item then is placed at its alternative position, which again can be full, and has to be taken out and moved to its alternative position. Thereby you get chains of replacements. And if the table is too full, these chains can become a cycle and the item cannot be inserted. So this is again the same cuckoo hashing. In the beginning you hear the ascending sequence being inserted into the table. The growing random noise in the background are actually the replacements being made. And soon you will hear the replacement chains becoming longer and longer and slowly hear the cycle forming. And that is the cycle. This item can no longer be inserted. This second version of cuckoo hashing allows each item to be placed at three alternative positions. This allows the table to become much more densely filled. And as you will hear, the final cycle in the sound is also longer than in the two position version. That is pretty cool, huh? Yes, and that was it. Those were 18 sorting algorithms and 4 hash table implementations. I hope you liked it, I hope you found the LED animation with sound very interesting. And maybe you now see a little bit more about how deep and complex these algorithms are. And I hope you share my fascination for this art project. Thank you for listening.